Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're talking about how new comic book collectors, specifically the ones that have started collecting within the past five years or so, are leaving the collecting hobby and moving on to something else. So when I'm talking in this video, I want you to put yourself in the perspective of somebody who just recently started collecting within the past few years. There have been several people that have reached out to me to try to sell their collection specifically, one of which I featured just a few weeks ago and he had uh, many slabs, mostly modern books, newly freshly graded books, uh, freshly printed books with a lot of signature series. It was, obvious a it was obviously a collection that had just been started and put together within the past few years. Then we had somebody that was a longtime collector uh, getting out of the hobby as well. This isn't exclusive to new collectors, but a lot of these big comic book collections are coming to sale, coming to auction, uh, going up for sale and this was another example where this guy had probably the best comic book collection I've ever seen not in real life but virtually uh, when he was selling all that stuff and sold it for over three hundred thousand dollars an individual that um, has been a friend of mine since I was three years old he uh, was one of the reasons I got into this hobby along with finding my dad's collection and he told me in, in a text message he says Hey, I'm I'm wanting out of this. I'm I'm done. Uh, you, do you want to buy my collection? And I said, you know, what do you mean? Are you done? Like, are you you just done for good? And he says, Yeah, man. I'm just I just want out of this. I'm I'm moving on. It just kind of like hurt me a little bit to know that he was done with it. He was getting out. You know, whatever his reasons may be, but it it seems like there is a lot of people getting out of this. So putting yourself in their perspective. Think about if you're one of those people that bought a big book, bought a, bought a Hulk 181, bought an X-Men 1, bought, bought some big Marvel Silver Age Grail, and you're sitting on that book now with it being uh, half, if not uh, less than half of what you paid for it in its value. So the rub I have and the major crux of this video is this influencer, this YouTuber, this surge of people that made comic book YouTube videos, specifically in 2019, 2020, and 2021, really affected the market negatively. And here's why. A statement fresh. Peace. Like you, uh, I'm, I'm assuming many of you watch some of these bigger YouTube channels. And the one I'm going to be t focusing on the most today is... Uh, is Very Gary. Very Gary was one of the channels that I watched like every single week, like multiple times a week. This is not something I've ever really talked about on this channel, but uh, I really watched him a lot. But what I saw was this same pattern of things he would say. And he would say things like, you know, this book is only going up or you know this book's going to hold its value or this book is yada 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 you should maybe buy this book now he would always put like a little caveat saying like do your research do your due diligence have some issues with this because this is obviously an individual that had been in this hobby for a while he's seen the ups and downs and you would assume a majority of his viewership and fan base was this new influx of people coming into the hobby. To say that the things he was saying is disingenu were disingenuous is kind of an understatement because these guys that have been in this hobby, and especially if you guys are watching that have been in this hobby for a while and seen the ups and downs, you knew this was gonna crash. A statement he fresh, peace. You knew this was gonna come back down to earth. And you know he would always say those little caveats, you know, do your research, do your due diligence, but it, it, he still was pushing the books, you know, informing the books, and then he would be at the next Comic Con with the biggest booth there, or doing the next live sale, or doing the next whatnot sale. Coming at it from a perspective of a new collector, man, that is a, um, that is not where you want to be getting your information, not where you want to be uh, watching to to make decisions that are let's just face facts, big financial decisions. A lot of you are probably like screaming at the camera, you know, buy what you love, buy, you know. Well, if you're somebody new 
getting into this and you don't know what you love or you don't know what you like, you, you buy things or do things on the recommendation of others a lot of the time because you don't have anything to go on. And as far and as vast as, a, as, a, as the comic book hobby is, put yourself in the perspective of that new collector again and you, 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 need, you need help getting, getting started. Fast forward 2024 and you have all these books. You have books that you, you bought. You went to the, the new comic book day. You, know, you went to your LCS every week as per the recommendation of you know, Jim Mint or, 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 or Comic Tom of trying to get, you know, getting the, the hottest book or recommendation of what to read. A stay minty fresh. Peace. You have long boxes or short boxes now of those things. And you're, you're stuck with something that has really no value long term. You may have enjoyed it at the time, which is great. Um, but you, you kind of are left with a little a little bitter taste in your mouth, a little saltiness, You're kind of questioning why you got in this. And I think a lot of people are like pressing the eject button because not only is your book, say you bought your book for $4,000, not only is your book now worth $2,000 or less, your book is actually worth even less because of inflation. A lot of people were buying these things, buying blue chip keys. That was always the word that was buzzing around amongst the, the Jim Mint and the Comic Tom 101 uh, zeitgeist was like, these are books that won't go down. These are the tried and true books. These are other guys that I'm talking about that had been in this for a while. They had seen what was happening. Can they, can they sit there and play dumb and say, well, I didn't know it was going to do this, or I didn't know it was going to... I don't know. I think that's being disingenuous, like I was saying. These guys knew it was a pump and dump situation. Pump these books up, and they're not the only ones guilty of this. There are many, many more. But this pump and dump of get these books hot, get them higher, get them, get, get them out into the market, tell, tell people these are the... These are the keys. These are the ones that are not going down, the blue chip keys. And then here you are, 2024, and you're like, what the hell? Like, what? They were wrong. They were wrong in every way. So you're sitting there and you have to make that decision if you're a new comic book collector. Do you continue to collect? Do you continue to trust the process? Do you continue to buy things and hope that? Maybe they'll recover one day. Did you develop a love for comics along the way? You know, hopefully you did. But if you're sitting there and saying, you know, oh, I don't buy things. Um, I don't care if they, they go up in value. I, you're lying. Um, so many people have reached out to me. I, I, I know just internally this, this hobby is you buy, you're buying something, trying to get it for a little and, and hoping that maybe down the road it's worth a few more dollars than what you paid for it. That, that is, the comic book game is predominantly that. A stay minty fresh. Peace. This is, this is a collecting game. This is a flipping game. This is a, you know, buy low, sell high game. And anybody that tells you that that is not what this is, is lying or being a little disingenuous at, at a minimum. I think a lot more of these collections will come up for sale within the next six years, the rest of this decade. I mean, a lot of these people that, that got in it and are not happy with the results, not happy with the trends that they see, not, are not happy that, you know, that, you know, getting into something, you know, biting the bullet, buying in, and then, trying to trust somebody else's advice, it, it, it didn't work out. We have to be very careful, especially if you're somebody with a voice and you're watching this, somebody that has an audience, somebody that is influential. I don't care if you have 500 subscribers or 500,000 subscribers or you have an Instagram or something. You have to put yourself in the perspective of a newbie coming in a lot of times. 
these guys and girls are very malleable. These people can be swayed. They're they're not they 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 don't they haven't had the they haven't taken their licks. And unfortunately, a lot of times you have to learn from the school of hard knocks, but so many of these people it's it's like they can make bad bad decisions. They buy the mystery boxes, they get into the raffles, they go to new comic book day for weeks and weeks on end buying, you know, getting 10, 12 books on their pull list. And then you're sitting there years later and you're like, damn, what did I do? Why, why did I do this? Why did I listen to X, Y, Z? I just don't want that for anybody. I want you to get into this and do this because you like it. Find things you love um, and and don't listen to the sway of these influencers telling you what to buy. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If at any point in time you like this video, give the thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.